this is a moment that I've been looking forward to to share with you folks. Uh, there's a school in Litchfield, Connecticut, and Noel is in charge of it. Noel, tell us about the school on the green. Hi, Glendora. Thank you so much for having us on. Um, it's great that we get to connect with you and talk about the school. My name is Noelle, and I am the board president uh, for School on the Green. Um, our school, the history, we could start with, um, it's named after our green, the Main Street area of Litchfield. And it opened its doors in 1972. And I think that was the year you also started, Glendora. Oh, you're right, honey. Yeah, so all uh, many good things happened in 1972. Um, so we just celebrated, we're a little over 50 years um, of cooperative learning. Our school is a, a co-op school, a cooperative school. And what that means is if... Hello? Hold everything. The phone did a funny thing, hon. Noel, what were you saying? She's trying to remember, Glendora. Give her a second. Jeez. Well, it doesn't matter. I'm going to patch it together, and I'm going to tell people what happened. All right, everybody. Get, get ready for another cue, and I'm going to fix it up. Okay. Folks, I'm sorry. Something went wrong with the telephone, and uh, please forgive the electronic. Uh, Noel, you were telling me, aren't you on a very famous route, like Route 20 or something like that? Route 7? We are. Route 7, aren't you? Uh, on? I'm not sure about that, um, but I know we have uh, the 50 years in the, the 50 years of our uh, of our doors being open, which is something that you have in common as far as in the entertainment field. Uh, yeah, I think I'm glad you mentioned yeah. that. Um, <laughs> uh, Noel, uh, it's the green is right there in Litchfield, right? Yeah. And it's mm -hmm. a, yep, the green is. Go ahead. And it's a beautiful little uh, town, isn't it? It is. There's lots of um, stores. You know, you can walk down the main avenue. The children, you know, during uh, Halloween time, we do a Halloween parade, which is really fun, and the local businesses come out. Um, we get to do the children trick or treating. Um, we also have our chamber of commerce. We have libraries. We have Tapping Reef, which is the oldest um, law school. Oh my goodness! And I think yes, and at least the Northeast, if not, the, I think at least in the Northeast. I don't know about the country, but it's one of the oldest law schools. Um, we have a lot of historical buildings. A lot of our buildings were are still standing from, you know, the time of the American Revolution. We have lots of churches. Um, it's a really beautiful area to visit. Now, how did the idea start, dear? Where did it start? In whose mind? The school? Yes. Um, I'm not exactly sure who started it, but I know it, it was started out of a, an idea to have a cooperative school. A cooperative school. And what does that mean? What does that mean, Noel? a cooperative? Sure. A cooperative school is where you have the parents have involvement in their child's education, their first education experience. So parents are invited to be part of the school board. Oh. You can either be in. Yes. It's, it's, I, I actually, my mom had us in a cooperative school. So I grew up in a cooperative school, and you matriculate right into public school. It's not a different, it's not like a Montessori. It's, it's just a, a way of having a preschool structure where the board helps make decisions that that guide the school. So as far as you, you work with the teachers, the director, you, you know, have involvement with different policies that go into place with um, how the budget is used you know, how the, what the children learn, the different programs, the different field trips. So you do have kind of an influence and a say on your child's education from this early standpoint, which is really great because you really get to be involved and not just drop them off at the door, you know, and not really know what goes on in their school day to day. And how many people does that involve on the board? Um, 
the board, we currently have 10 members on the board. And some of those members are, um, you know, in, in roles like executive board members. We have president, vice president, secretary, and we have fun people who do fundraising. Um, we have a fundraising kind of like chairperson, and then she has people who work with her on committees for different fundraising activities. And then you can also be on the board just as a board member, which is what I did last year is I joined not really knowing the community and wanting to get involved. I joined as just a board member, and I really learned a lot about the school. Oh, yes. And I decided, yes, and I decided, decided to step up into um, a bigger role this year because I just really, you know, loved how the school was run. I loved its message, so I really wanted to be more of a part of it. I don't think an, more you couldn't find a faster way to get it done, could you, than to join the board? <laughs> yeah, that happened. Right yes. Now, uh, what co area do you cover geographically? Um, it's all of uh, Litchfield County. Wow. So you could be, yes, yeah, you could be from uh, Bethlehem, the different towns in our area, there's Bethlehem, Torrington, um, you know, different parts of Litchfield. I would say people drive, the farthest away I think people come from is about, I want to say a 15-minute drive away, 20-minute drive away to come to school. Um, there are other there are other schools preschools in the area, but um, ours is really one of the only cooperative ones left. And tell us more, Noel. Yeah. Tell us more. Mm hmm About. Well, um, Litchfield. I can name some of the towns in Litchfield County. Would you please? Litchfield County. I would have to say, um, like. Um, I believe that Goshen is part of Litchfield County. Okay, and Cornwall? Um, I don't, I'm not 100% sure on that. Yeah, okay. So Goshen, no. Goshen, Morris, Goshen, yeah. Morris, Litchfield, Northfield. Um, we have some students from Torrington. Um, there's actually, they actually have an initiative to combine some of the smaller schools together. Um, to make up a larger a larger school um, um, for children in uh, like elementary through high school, um, and we have uh, I think it's Washington, Morris, and Goshen are combined or a combined high school. I get the idea now. Yes, yeah. and how are the mm -hmm. grade? How do the grades go? Do you have like middle school? Do you have junior high? Do you have things like that? In our in our town, we have. Um, center school, which is the younger grades, and I believe that, um, I believe it's kindergarten to third. Then there's intermediate, middle, and high school. Oh, really? Uh-huh. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's four. Like, I'm from New York, so this is a different school experience for me. And um, who, who franchises you? Who uh, certifies you and all that? We follow uh, early childhood we fall under the Office of Early Childhood Education. So we are, um, we fall under public school guidelines for like, say, for like the COVID response or for, um, you know, school, um, if there's school closings, like for weather, or if there's any kind of policies that have to do with the public schools, we follow kind of their calendar and their guidelines. But who governs us is the Office of Early Education because of how young our students are. And what are the great advantages, Noel? Yeah. The advantages of... Hello? Hello? Yes, okay. what are the advantages? Yeah, what are the great advantages there? Of being part of the... Oh, oh, no, why is your education, uh, you think, uh, more serviceable than other schools? Well, we have a play-based learning model, which means that instead of just putting kids from maybe like a home environment right into an academic, full-on academic environment, we have them learn through play, learn through play experiences, learn through um, socializing, learn through going outdoors and, you know, being in nature, taking field trips. Um, you know, seeing what goes on in Litchfield County around them. So they get to learn in kind of a, a multi-sensory way. 
And you're on the Lich, you're on the Litchfield Torrington Road. Is that where the green is? The green is off of um yeah, it's off of the yeah, it's off of the main road. Hmm. It's off of like the two oh two, like the main the main hot the main road. I have to look I would have to look it up and get back to you exactly on which which road it would exactly be on. <laughs> um, oh, well it's not hard it's not hard to find. You go go to Litchfield, right? No, Litchfield is not very big. So South we're off of South Street. So we are right next to um Saint Michael's Episcopal Church and across from kind of the main, some of the main stores and like thoroughfares of town. It's very walkable. It's a walkable green. Um, we have a very large kind of gazebo in the middle. We have concerts in the summer. Um, it's a very, um, it's a great, it's a great place to be, especially in the summer when people are out and about. We have a lot of events, um, you know, through the summer months. And um, it's a great place to, to raise children for sure. It's, it's a quiet um, but there's still a lot to do, and there's a lot of cultural, um, a lot of cultural events and, and things that kind of spark your interest. Uh, what do you consider your greatest achievement in your years of existence? Well, I would say that the school we served the community for 50 years, and we've provided so many children with a strong foundation and love of learning. Any of the like, we have a lot of. Um, a lot of current students who have older siblings who come back to the school and say, I wish I could still go to school here. Oh. I wish I could still be here. It's so much fun. And it's, it really is, you know, how learning kind of used to be before it got so stressful with a lot of testing, you know, and, and a lot of just so very rigorous. It really brings it back to a simpler time of learning where, you know, like I said, learning is fun. You have friendships. You learn all of the basic things that, you know, really create a society of, you know, intelligent, really empathetic, great people. So I really believe in the school's message. It's a, it's a great place to start out. Well, no, Noel, do you teach spelling differently than Montessori does or differently than the public schools do? I think most schools do a sense, what they call a sensory approach to letters. A lot of it is phonics. We have a program called Letters or Characters. Two oh. o'clock p.m. 76.3 degrees Fahrenheit. Go ahead, Susan. Don't, I mean, go ahead, Noel. Don't let that bother okay. you. Okay. So Letters or Characters is a program that we have where you... Each, le each letter is a character, so it has a personality, it has, you know, a way of being. And then the character, you're going to use the children draw it, they make it out of clay, they have, like, um, um, shaving cream that they draw. They learn how to draw the letters in all different ways, so it, it employs all of the senses to learn. So no matter what kind of learner you are, you're able to kind of grasp. But I know for my daughter being in school... You know, she started out, she was only three when she started the program. So this is her second year, and her writing has just tremendously taken off. Um, you know, she knows all of her all of her letters. Every week they come home with a new, a new letter learned that they did a new project with. Um, they just make little, um, like, A was for King. So she came home with a K, and the K was made with jewels all over it for the king. And <laughs> you know, they have Q, Q for quilt, and they make pick on squares, and the squares represent a quilt. So they do a lot of kind of very visual learning, which is great. So it makes it fun. It makes it enjoyable to learn, you know, your letters and learn phonics and all those things that you kind of need to start off with. You know, all of your colors, the school, you know, it has you know, each child can be given a task during the day, and they have a task such as, you know, a weather watcher. You have to go and report what the weather is today. They have children who take care of the fish, children who help with cleanup, children who help with the snacks, children who have, you know, little jobs and responsibilities. And it's a way to teach those things without being kind of obvious about it. And it's just, it is a, the way that they, they learn, the way that they, they teach is just, I, I really, it really a skill. I think it appeals to small children. My favorite letter was W. 
Oh, really? Why? Yeah, yeah, that was when I started out, my favorite letter was W. What was yours? My daughter's is R. R? Actually, after mm -hmm. that. I asked the other day why the R, and she said because it's a line, and it's a line, and then she said it was like a, a circle and then a line, and she just likes drawing that. She just really likes R, and luckily her name has an R in it, so she she really likes it. Yeah. I think mine, mine was probably an S. I think an S is just fun. It's just fun to draw. Yes, it is. Uh, mother said, Joni, what are you doing? She said to her preschooler, what are you doing? And Joni says, mm -hmm. Joni says, well, I'm writing to Priscilla. And her mother says, well, Joni, you know you can't write. And Pris and Joni said, uh, well, that's all right. Priscilla can't read either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it evened itself out greatly. Now, what did you want the public to know about your school? Um... Just to, just to be supportive of, you know, cooperative learning, um, we have our fundraising off of our website, schoolonthegreen.com. We sell hanging baskets and wreaths from local nurseries. Um, we have a spring event that's going to be at a local golf course that has a silent auction. And we have uh, items from the community that we help auction off to raise money and funds and a raffle. And it's just a really fun event. It's a way to get people in the community together um, and kind of raise awareness for our school. Oh, okay. Yeah. And what else do you want the public to know about your great school? Um, as far as, you know, I think that, that this type of learning is kind of, it, it's starting to be phased out, unfortunately. Um, as you know, I know so many parents, you know, both parents need to work, um, and, you know, it's hard for them to be as involved as maybe they want to be. Um, but I tell people it's such a short time, you know, your children being this age is such a short period of time. And the more you can really interact with them, the better. Yeah. And we have a lot, of, we have a lot of opportunities for parents to come in. And, um, you know, read, uh, do a mystery reader where you come in and you get to read to the kids. You read them a book. Um, you know, we, Oh, yes. You can't beat that. No. And it's special for, you know, your child to see you come in and, and do those things to come in. And we have some volunteers um, that are able to come in the school and, and help out. Um, oh, that's nice. For, a cooperative school uh, really runs on, on its parent volunteers. The, and the parents come on the parents come on the field trip, which is wonderful. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, very good. Do you have a nursery school teaching, so to speak, nursery school level? I no, I am not a nursery school teacher. I don't have. Um, I taught. I've, I've done substitute teaching before for older grades, but I don't have the background in education. We have um, Sherry um, Shaveri is our our director and also our head teacher. And then in the classroom, we have a co-teacher. Her name um, is Ms. Krista. And then we have also classroom aides. So our, our classroom, it does not get too big. We have under 20 students in a class. And we have a lot of helpers. 22 are, uh, is the mark, huh? 22 yeah. is the mark. You don't go bigger than Sorry? 22. You don't have more than 22 children in a class. We have, we have 20 in each class. In each so we have a, um, we also do, um, you don't have to go full time, which is nice for really young kids. But you can go two days, three days, or five days. So if you have kids, you know, who are on the younger side, and maybe you don't want to put them in five days of school right away, they can start a little smaller and ease into it, which is really nice too. If they're younger and kind of used to being home, you know, it's nice to have them. And sometimes, you know, moms and dads aren't ready for their kids to go full time either. So it's nice for both to be able to be able to kind of get that easing into school. Do you have first, Great first step. Do you have first, second and third in one room? First, second and third. We are only we are only preschool. Okay. The ages the ages can be three to five. So you can be between three and five years old. And then typically kids then go to kindergarten. Then usually they go to the public school kindergarten or the Montessori or wherever they're next their next adventure is usually by six they're off to um to kindergarten 
kindergarten. Did uh, any of your attendees ever become famous people? I'm not sure about that. I would have to look, look up and see because I'm relatively new um, to the school district. But I will have to find that out. That's a really good question. Yes, yeah, a really good question, yeah. Now, it is. Uh, now, how are you listed on the web? We are, actually, we are on Instagram, and we are also, um, we also have a website for the school. And what is so it? Our Instagram, I'm sorry, go ahead. And what is the address of the school website? Oh, okay, okay. Our website is www.schoolonthegreen.com. Dot what, dear? Uh, is there anything else that you wanted the folks to know about your great school? Um, just that, you know, we are so excited to be part of the community. It's a great, you know, we love Litchfield and, um, you know, 50 years strong uh, in Litchfield um, teaching the wonderful kids here. And just a big thank you to the parents who have just taken their time to help our school be as great as it can be. Um, we really appreciate it. And we appreciate all of, you know, the great businesses in Litchfield that have supported us, you know, all these years. And we hope to continue. Long yeah, long yeah. Long to do. What is Litchfield famous for? Well, besides the Tapping Reef, we have the Law School. That's what I would say is what Litchfield kind of is most famous for. Uh-huh. Um, that, I think, would be, like, maybe historically what we're most famous for. I believe Harry Beecher Stowe also um, has been through Litchfield and a couple other famous people from around the time of the Revolution. Litchfield was kind of, I think, popular. And like I said, we have a lot of uh, historical buildings that are still here. People are living in a lot of the homes that are from the 1700s. Yes, my uh, husband's. Let's see how this goes. My husband's daddy was named Ernest Buell, and Ernest Buell had a brother, and he had a farm in Litchfield. Mm -hmm. And this would go way back to the 1800s, yes. There are a lot of farms, you know, and a lot of farms are still so operational today. Um, we have a lot of field trips to, we have a field trip to a, um, a Christmas tree farm in the winter, um, which I thought was just so unique to have a family that's you know, it's a Christmas tree farm for years and years, the Angevine Christmas trees. Um, you know, we have this wonderful Flanders farm. They make maple syrup. And it's just, we get to bring the kids to all these wonderful activities, and it's just a really great learning experience to see it right in your own back. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Amy, how are we doing on time, honey? <clears throat> We're at 23 minutes and 8 seconds. Uh what do you think you want in the future, dear? What What are you looking for in the future? What are you hoping for? Thank you, Amy. You're welcome. I think to keep um, our cooperative style of learning, like I was saying, it's hard for, you know, two parents to really bring their kids on the field trip to be as involved as maybe they want to be. Um, we're also getting a little limited because um, there are stricter regulations on federal and state levels as far as having interaction with students during the day. And I understand 100% that, you know, you want children, you want your children to be safe in school. Um, but for a school that's as small as ours, um, with such a small amount of students, we rely on having parents yeah. being able to come in and, you know, help us with snack time or help us with, you know, different activities. And the kids love when their parents are there for their birthday or for <laughs> yeah. special events. Yeah. Um, and that makes it difficult because a lot of schools are going towards uh, mandatory background checks, mandatory fingerprinting for any adult that's in a building. Um, so that makes it a little bit more limited as to who we can have in the room. Um and while I, I completely understand, like I said, it's a safety measure, um, for a larger school, it makes perfect sense. For a small school, it just, it kind of holds us back from really fulfilling um, the cooperative style that we'd like to stick with. Uh, I know one teacher teaching children your age, she took them for a walk, and she says, children, there's something that we all can be thankful for. We are all free. 
And the little boy said, I am not free, I am poor. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, one thing I was going to ask you, <laughs> just slipped my mind. Uh, are you, did you ever consider franchising? Starting other schools like yours in other areas? Sure. I don't really think that the school was looking to franchise. Um, I think what we have is kind of just unique and special here. Um, I'm not, and I'm not sure kind of how to, how we go about that. I think we're kind of happy with where we are and, and just oh, okay. things that unique, unique to our area. Sure. I see. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, no. Uh, Amy, can you think of anything else to tell the public about school in the no. green? Maybe you, uh, What's your, you might want to tell her a joke. Like, I'm sorry, go ahead. Maybe, Boy, you wanted, Amy. maybe you want to tell Noel a joke? Oh, tell him <laughs> jokes. Okay, we can tell him jokes, I guess. <laughs> I wish I'd known, I wish that known because I have a grand collection of jokes for children that age. You did? I think you told me a joke last time I spoke to you. Um, okay. Uh, computers are in the Bible. Uh, Eve said to Adam, do you want an apple too? <laughs> <laughs> that was the one you told me. When oh, I that was the one. Oh, that's time. good. That's a good that one. That was it. That's a good one. Good one. It is a good one. And the uh, little tailor uh, was not doing well in his business. And uh, his rabbi said, you'll have to take the Lord as your partner. And a few months went by, and the rabbi came back, and he said, did you take your Lord as your partner? And the little tailor says, oh, we did, and we're doing great. We've got stores springing up all over the place. We've got trucks going everywhere. Look, there goes one of our trucks now, Lord and Taylor. <laughs> there you go. Amy, can you think of any? Um... Oh, I wish I'd known this in advance. I have wonderful school jokes. Lord and Taylor has a real New Jersey store. Oh, what did you say about New Jersey? You, Lord, Lord and Taylor, I feel like, is a real New Jersey store. Oh, really? Okay. When I lived in New, when I lived in New Jersey, I remember seeing Lord and Taylor everywhere. Oh, yes, and Lord and Taylor all over Manhattan, Westchester, and all mm -hmm. over. I would think they would be in Connecticut someplace, at least. How, yeah. how did you hear about our school? Oh, how did I hear about it? Uh, I have a uh, public access television network, the Glendora Public Access Television Network. I've had it for 53 years. I have done uh, 14,200 programs. Uh, I have a hole in it right now. They go from uh, Boston, Springfield, Pittsfield, Chicago, wow. Philadelphia, uh, San Francisco, it goes all over the United States, but I have a hole in Torrington, in the Torrington uh, cable TV area that covers, oh, about 16 towns. Oh, and, wow. Okay. And so I wanted my message. By the way, the message of my program is when all is said and done, the only thing that really matters is how did you treat others? Yeah. And that's my message. And, uh, it was not getting on in the Torrington system. Mm. And so I said, well, I've got to do something for Torrington, and I've got to find a nice program to awaken people's thoughts about Torrington and get it on, mm. and get it on public access TV. So I went looking for you and others, oh, okay. and others like you, and we saw the school on the green, and that was enticing. Because I have that New Englandy feeling about Litchfield on account of my, oh yeah, my husband's That's uncle, cool. and I've That's been to Litchfield, very, very and I, New yeah, I very think, New England food. yeah, I've been to Litchfield, and it's very, very charming. It's very charming. Yeah, That's the word I would use too. But there's no question about it. That whole area is charming. Tell the people about the other towns up there. Let's see. Well, like Goshen is really pretty as well. Bantam is really nice. Let me think. Bantam has, um, have you heard of Arethusa? No, tell me about it. They have, um, they have like an ice cream, a creamery. 
Oh, okay. They make, they have their own dairy. Okay. They make, they have their own dairy right in town. Um, and then you can also go to their ice cream shop and they have a restaurant as well. And it's actually frequented by Manhattanites. Oh, okay. Very, okay. Very popular. What are some, um, of, like I said, it, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, you go ahead. I interrupted you. <laughs> oh, no, no, that's good. It's in Bantam. So the Bantam is like 10, 15 minutes from. Yeah. I think um, um, let's feel, there's skiing. We have Mohawk Mountain. Um, oh yes. Yeah. There's a lot. Of, just, there's a lot. You know, once you get in an area, there's a lot. Of, they have a whole art. There's a lot of art. Um, artist enclaves in Litchfield. Very full of art. Yes. Yes. Uh, and uh, let me think. Also, I don't know if you're familiar with the Torrington YMCA at all, but they're doing a lot of programs. I know they're doing initiatives for swimming um, to help. Uh, at risk kids get into their swimming program. They're doing that currently, um, which I thought was really nice. And then also, I do a program called TIPS, T I P S, out of the Litchfield uh, Community Center. And that's for um, moms of young children. We meet on Fridays. Well, moms and caregivers. We, reach, we meet at 9 30 um, on Fridays just for mm -hmm. their kids and, and moms to kind of get together. Mm -hmm. Get the little kids to socialize, the moms to socialize and get out, especially in the cold of the winter. Yes, honey. Um, and I started that in the fall of last year and it's really kind of taken off, which has been really great. Well, that's so, that's so good. Yes, Amy, you say our time is up? We're at 31 minutes and 44 Yes, minutes. honey, we have to say goodbye, dear. Thank you so much okay. for spending your generous time with us. Thank you so much, Lindora and Amy. I really, really appreciate it. We'll be back in touch with you, honey. You're welcome. <laughs> thank, thank, thank you. Take bye, care. Bye-bye, dear. Bye.